Hi guys, this is Michelle Kane with Michelle Kane Photography and Actions. And on this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at a couple of really simple actions that you can use to boost the contrast and color and cut through the haze that you might experience in your photographs. I shot this photograph yesterday as I was coming off the Bighorn Mountains and I didn't use any kind of filter or anything on my lens. I just shot straight from the window of the truck as we were coming off the hill and it was beautiful at the time. I could tell it was hazy outside because we were up so high in elevation but um, what was captured in the camera was just not what my eye saw that day. So um, we're going to cut through this haze and give this picture a lot more pop. And you can tell it's my straight out of camera image. Here's my sensor dust here on the on the picture. And I'm just going to grab my spot healing brush tool and just zip it right over there and get rid of that sensor spot. And I think that's all that there is in the picture. So from there we can see that there's a lot of shadows. So the sun was coming through the clouds and where it's dark here on the mountainside, those are just shadows from the clouds. So I don't want to lose detail in those areas and have them go completely black where you don't see any kind of uh, contrast or color or light variation in there. So be careful about that. But right now it's a pretty photo, but it just has no wow factor to it. So we're going to play an action from the Botanical Blend set called Spicy. And then we're going to delve into the layers that are inside of this action and customize them for this photo. So hitting play there. Um, right out of the gate, let's turn this eyeball on so we can see, on and off so we can see the change that it made. And it made a really good change just right with the default settings there. We didn't lose too much of the detail in the shadowy parts of the picture and we still have room to play. So maybe this is all your picture needs, but if you want to go a little further, let's open up the action grouping here and we're going to have some layers inside of here that we can uh, adjust. So the first thing I want to do is maybe brighten up the whole picture and I'm going to take this brighten layer and just amp it up just a little bit from 20 to maybe about 35, 33 somewhere in there. Um, and then I want to boost the color up just a little bit and we've got it set at 25% and I'm going to boost that up a little bit and I'm going to go all the way just so you can kind of see if I max it out it's really dark. Now here's a little trick that you may not know. Um, if you look at the blending mode here on this color boost layer, it's set to soft light. Now you can change that blending mode to something like normal, and now you get um, more of the color pop versus any kind of color saturation with a little bit of darkness in there. Again, if we go back to soft light, we've got nice color saturation, but we also get really dark in our shadows. So something to think about if you want to switch it back up to normal or try a different blending mode, something like overlay or even hard light, depending on your um, particular photograph. I'm going to go up to normal here and decide if I want to do normal or if I want to keep it at soft light. And I do think I like the color, um, how genuine it feels when it's on the soft light blending mode. So I'm going to keep it there and I'm going to make my opacity somewhere about 43%. Um, and let's click this eyeball on and off so we can see the color boost. Really see it in the blues here and in the greens down below. Now there's a darken layer here that we can use to darken the whole picture. Right now it's on there at 20%. If we increase that, we can make certain parts of the picture dark, maybe by using the layer mask associated with it, or we can turn off the darken altogether. I'll go ahead and put that back at its default of 20. And now there's a boost layer. Let's look at what this boost is going to do. This is going to give us kind of a contrast boost in the entire picture. So from 0 to 100, um, maybe I want to boost that somewhere around the 83 level. And then we've got a sharpening layer. So uh, I don't want to sharpen anything more in this picture. We've got some sharp edges happening down here below and that's about all we need. We don't need a hyper sharp picture. So now I'm going to go back up to my color boost layer now that I've kind of fiddled with some of the below layers and maybe drop that down just a little bit and I just keep kind of going back and forth just because I set maybe my brighten layer at 34 originally I may need to keep altering that so I'm going to brighten it up even just a little bit more and then if there's areas that I want to selectively darken maybe I'll come down here to the darker and invert this layer mask now on my masks panel I can hit invert 
or it's also Command or Control I will invert that layer mask to cover up the darkening effect. Now with the white brush, I'm going to hit B for brush on my keyboard and X to uh, toggle my colors from black to white. So I've got a white brush selected to paint on this black mask and I'll grab about a 30% opacity brush. And I'm just going to come in here and selectively darken just maybe the top, a little bit of this blue, make it a little bit more blue, and just a few spots down in the middle. So now if you look at the layer mask over here, you can see where it's whitish gray. That's where I've painted the effect in of darkening. And where it's black, I've left it out. So this mask also shows that this is quick mask mode. You can get this by clicking your backslash key where it is uh, red in this case. I haven't painted and where it's a little bit less red and, and clear, that's where I have painted. So let's look at the spicy now all together. At the grouping of 80% opacity and we'll just click the eyeball on and off before so much haze so much lack in the picture it just needed some pop and now we've got this really pretty um, popped out picture that looks a lot more like what I feel like I saw yesterday um, so from here you can continue to amp up the color if you want to I don't want to go crazy and make it so surreal and fake looking that it's just totally unbelievable or you could even uh, give it a different kind of haze. Before it was just a muddled, yucky, kind of gray haze. But you could come in with any of the tones that have a haze associated with it from the botanical blend set and give it a haze that way. Maybe you want it to have sort of a retro feel. And this picture sort of lends itself, in my mind, to that retro feel. So rhubarb is an action that I like to play to get that look. And what it does is almost gives like that... 1970s coloring to a picture and it definitely gives kind of this pinkish tone on the sides which kind of feels like those light leaks that you got from photographs clear back in the 70s and, um, and when this action plays it is 70 percent opacity we could kick that down and kind of uh, boost it back up and see what you like and it and even in the blues it gives more of that 70s coloring to the picture now don't forget you can always open up any of these actions and um, maybe turn a certain layer off if there's in this instance a cool rhubarb maybe you want to turn that one off um, that's what we get if we want to maybe take the boost off of it and have it be more hazy but again in that 70s pretty hazy kind of feel um, maybe that's the look that you're looking for or maybe you want even more of this vignetting in this case we can there's a darkening vignette and a warming vignette so maybe if we darken more we could amp that up I don't really like it darker but these are the things that you need to do is experiment with these actions and you know click things on and off increase and decrease opacities customize things for you um, one of the things that drives me crazy is when people think they're going to get an action hit play and magic's going to happen on their picture and they don't have to customize anything and that is not what the spirit of my actions are about my actions are built so that you can customize them so that you can break in to the layers and switch opacities and turn eyeballs on and off and use the layer mask to selectively paint the effects in where you want um, I really want to help you boost your creativity and not just give you kind of an out of the box here hit play and call it good sort of um, tool editing tool so in this case I'm just gonna keep the rhubarb on there I like that uh, kind of retro feel 1970s look and I think that's all I want to do to this picture if I wanted to go in and boost the color I could do that uh, one of the easiest ways to boost color just to give you a little side note I'm gonna play an action from my uh, hearty soul heart and soul set called merge it and there it is and it's going to give me a stamped um, composited layer that I can work on so it's basically giving me kind of a snapshot in my layers palette of all of the things that I've done so far and if I don't like what I've done with this particular layer once I start to make changes to it I can always just drag it to the trash it kind of helps me to not have to use the um, the history stamped in here um, and the snapshots so we've got a merge layer here. It's a pixel layer that I can go and play with. So one way to boost color would be to come in to your regular tools inside of Photoshop. And we're going to go into the sponge tool. 
and it's the dodge, burn, and sponge tool are all together, so I'm just holding down my mouse to select the sponge tool. You can cycle through these tools very easily just by hitting the keyboard shortcut and then hitting shift O, shift O, and I'm just holding shift down and, and hitting the O, and you can see that it um, cycles through the tools for you. So we want to get the sponge tool, and we've got it set to saturate up here, and a flow of about 20%, that sounds pretty good to me. And I'm just increasing my brush size with the bracket keys, right bracket key. Now, this is totally optional. I'm just showing you some ideas of things that you can do. Um, so let's go ahead and saturate maybe these sides a little bit more. And we're going to saturate right in the middle so that green's a little bit more poppy. And we'll sponge saturate right up in here. Now, if you want to switch your tool to, um, say, dodge, you can come in here and grip the dodge. And maybe we just want to dodge the, the lightest of the lights, the highlights, not the midtones or the shadows, but the highlights. And we'll dodge at maybe 10% exposure. I like to go really low and see what I'm going to get. Making my brush a little smaller. And now I can come in here and dodge some of these highlights in the picture and uh, make them a little bit brighter. Maybe even do a couple in the, in the clouds here. So say that that's something that you like, but you realize, oh my gosh, I went crazy dodging the heck out of this cloud over here and it's a little bit bright down in here. Well what can you do as opposed to you know going into your history and going back in and picking out well, where was that that I did that. What I like to do is go ahead and add a regular layer mask and that you just go down to your layers palette here and at the very bottom there's a little icon with a rectangle and a circle in the middle that's your add layer mask. We're going to add the layer mask here and we are going to brush some of this crazy white dodging out with a black brush. So we're basically covering it up. It's still there, but it's just covered up under this layer mask. So I've got my brush, just a regular brush, not the dodge tool or the sponge tool, but just a regular brush, B for brush, a black brush, and I'm going to hit a 50% opacity here, and now I'll just begin to cover some of this up. I'm going to drop my opacity down to 20 and just cover a little bit of these spots in here that I might have dodged a little too heavily. So that's a great way if you're using the dodge uh, sponge or um, what's the other one, burn tool, that you can go ahead and uh, kind of undo what you've done on the layer. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Let's look back really quickly before the video ends at the beginning. So we had this very blah with lots of potential kind of picture and just by tweaking the layers inside of spicy um, we've come up with a just nice contrast picture that would be perfectly acceptable in and of itself if you're going for kind of that retro look which I really like with um, outdoorsy uh, landscape sort of pictures like this we can just hit rhubarb and don't forget we came in here and customized some of the layers in here as well just increasing the vignetting um, you know again tweak it to your own content and uh, then we have the merged layer and again that's in the hearty action bundle that's in the heart and soul set and we just merged it to get a composite layer there that we could um, use the sponge dodge and saturate tool and maybe we'll just even pop this opacity down just a little bit on this entire layer and we've got a nice retro looking um, landscape picture. For more information about the Michelle Kane actions, you can go to my website, michellekanephotography.com. We've got freebies there, tutorials, and you can also link to all of the different videos that I've posted, um, these how-to videos. Any questions you might have, please leave those in the comments, and uh, I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much.